Hey there, welcome to the Jeff and Heidi Show, where you're going to have the opportunity to listen to and learn from everyday entrepreneurs. All right, welcome to the Jeff and Heidi Show. This is Jeff Hagee. Uh, my co-host, Heidi Anderson of ECI Secure Pay, can't be with us today, but I'm excited today to have Jamie Beckler with me. Jamie has an incredible history behind him, so I'm going to let him tell a little bit about himself, but I'll just give a brief introduction. He's a professional speaker, leadership trainer, and executive business coach. He works with teams ranging from corporations to the MBA. Before going full-time into leadership work, Jamie served for 20 years as a college basketball coach, professor, and administrator. Then when he hung up his whistle, he didn't stop coaching. He just moved it from the locker room to the boardroom. So now he coaches organizations on how they can build championship teams and cultures. Now that that's what I put together by reading on his website. I can tell you, he's a lot more than that. He's got an incredible uh, podcast success is a choice. Um, He's, he's an author, uh, the bus trip, the leadership playbook and building champions success principles from A to Z. And so I'm excited to talk about these things. There's a lot of things, um, to get in here into this so jamie just a little bit more tell me more about yourself awesome jeff i appreciate you having me on the show it's it's awesome um and uh thanks so much for having me but yeah i mean uh i was a college coach for a long time then i became a high school athletic director and now i am a leadership consultant and i speak and i write books and i host the success is a choice podcast and so um uh, those are kind of my labels. Those are, those are my boxes, I guess that you, that I can get put in, but, uh, um, I'm also a bad golfer. I'm also big into fantasy football and <laughs> fantasy sports. I have a, a fourth grader. I have a wife and I was a great teacher in the spring when everybody was quarantined. So I also, uh, I was, I believe I was teacher of the year in my district. I had to have been because, uh, I don't know. But my, but my son passed, my son went from third grade to fourth grade and I was his teacher in the spring at home. So I must've been a good teacher. So there you go. A lot lot of stuff, but uh, I appreciate you having me. Uh, Yeah. I I was in organized athletics for 20 years. And then I, uh, then I, I took the plunge and, and I jumped feet first into entrepreneurial uh, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit that, that bug, I caught that bug and I jumped both feet into the deep end. And, uh, yeah, I have been doing this for about four years now, uh, with, with leadership consulting, working with sports teams. I, I do work with businesses, uh, but sports teams is my niche. That's, that's what I've known for. Awesome. Thank you. And that's, you know, on this show, that's a lot. What we want to share is the entrepreneurial journey. You know, we like to hear why people did it, what their successes have been, what their struggles have been. And so, yeah, looking forward to hearing some of those stories. But one thing that actually just this morning, I was just kind of skimming through some things and it stood out to me and I thought, you know what, that, that is a great concept. And so this is where I want to start. Um, Your book, Building Champions, um, Success Principles from A to Z. Champions are not born. They are built through the development of found fund foundational principles of success. Tell me a little bit more about that concept. Well, it kind of goes to my whole, my philosophy of that success is a choice and that we are most of the time. I mean, there's always exceptions to everything out there, but, but the majority of the time, and, and I think a general rule is we are the sum total of the choices that we make. Uh, the decisions we make, what we do in life. We have responsibility for our lives. Yes, we can, we might be born a certain way. Uh, We might be born in a certain community. We might be born um, with some limitations or some challenges ahead of us. That doesn't mean we can't succeed. There are people that are able to succeed. And in the same way, people are born with silver spoons in their mouth. People have all the luxuries, have all of uh, everything handed to them to succeed all the resources and then they don't succeed because of their successes. And so I believe a champion is somebody that essentially, and and I use kind of champion sometimes interchangeable with success. And I, I know it's not like totally the same in most people's viewpoints, but success or being a champion is being the best that you're capable of being. And so we've all seen these sports teams that fall short every year and they're not true champions. They don't win the championship, but they're also not true. Cha- they're not 
truly successful because they didn't reach their potential. They always had more potential. They were good, but not good enough to win a championship because they weren't uh, either. They were, they were resting on their laurels or they just weren't doing what they needed to do. They were coasting. And we've also seen these people that maybe don't win a championship, but they overachieve, you know, man, I never would have thought that they would even made the playoffs, let alone get to the championship game. You know, it's too bad. They lost. It was a great story. Well, they overachieved. They were definitely champions, but, but in life, you know, most of us are never going to be known. We're, we're not going to be rich. We're not going to be famous. We're not going to be on TV all the time. That's most of us, but we can still be champions in life. I can be a champion to my next door neighbor. I can be a champion to my, my fourth grader. I can be a champion to the people I, I work with or I interact with on a daily basis. Or, so we can always be champions. We can be successful because we can choose to be that way. Um, you know, it, it, we're not born. I wasn't born this way. I might've been born to certain parents and they raised me a certain way, but I still had to make the choice, even in my own household or even in my own family. My brother and I are very different people, but we were raised by the same parents in the same house, in the same community, went to the same school, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but even we are different, not good or bad. We're just different, but we made choices right. along the way. Sometimes those choices lead to good outcomes. Sometimes they lead to bad outcomes. Sometimes they just lead to different outcomes. So, yeah, I think, I think we all are a sum total of the choices that we make. And if we want to be something a year from now, then we better start today or else a year from now, we're going to wish that we started today. Uh, if we want to have a better tomorrow, then we need to have a better today. We need to put some things into place today uh, to be better tomorrow. And what we are today is in large part to what we were yesterday, so to speak. Right. No, I love that. And I mean, it's easy to see how little things built up, building up compound on each other and develop what we're going to be in a year from now. So I, I love that, that, yeah, where we want to be in a year from now starts today. You know. <clears throat> yeah. And, and, and I mean, habits, we are our habits, you know, we all have habits to some degree, good or bad habits. And, and those don't, just happen overnight. Like I don't just, I didn't wake up today, roll out of bed and automatically, man, I'm a champion because I want to be, you know, I, I can make today the day that I decide I'm going to change my life or the day that I'm going to do something better from now on. But what I've done in the past, there's still some baggage there. There's some residuals there. There's some things, some habits that I'm going to have to break. Like I can decide today, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to be a marathon runner. That's a terrible example, but I'm going to be a marathon runner or I'm going to be a triathlete. Okay. I've decided from here on out, that's what I'm going to do. And so now I'm going to put some things in place, but my conditioning level, my eating habits, all that kind of stuff that I've built up. I'm not a marathon runner right now, just because I want to be. Um, now I'm going to have to start to, to change those habits and start to replace some of those negative habits or bad habits with good habits, but it's a choice. It's a daily, 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 daily choice every single day. And I would say, you know, hundreds and thousands of times, even during a day, you're going to make a choice about what you want to do. And is that going to lead you to those goals you want? Um, you know, is what you want more important than what you want right now? And so oftentimes we, we get side we, we side get sidetracked, we get distracted. Um, and, and we lose sight of our goals or lose sight of what I'm training for, what I want to be a year from now. And I worry more about, well, I, I just want to have this today, but that doesn't help me get closer to my goals. No, that, you know, as you talked about that, I just thought of a conversation I had a little while ago. Um, Tyson Durfee, world champion cowboy. He, he won the world in 2016. We got talking about this exact thing and it's the same story you hear of Michael Phelps. When you have a goal of what you're going to achieve, you've got to cut out certain things. You know, Tyson talked about he didn't go to the football games. He didn't go to the basketball games. He didn't go to prom. He, he was focused from high school doing those things. Michael Phelps talks about it, that he was practicing six days a week. And in uh, the compound effect, he talks about the fact that one of the things that stands out as a memory is his coach actually let him off 15 minutes early one time so he could go to a dance. And, you know, it's, what do you want versus what do you want now? Yeah, I like that concept. I love that. Now, 
Jamie's been on um, my other podcast, Daily Success Strategies. And so I, I want to watch myself here. I know Jamie and I could talk for hours and hours about success principles, mindset, all those so, sort of things. But I do want to make sure we talk about the entrepreneurial journey as well. So share with me some of that as you enter this new world of this side of coaching and what you're doing now. What were some of your biggest challenges that you faced making that transition? Yeah, great question. And and I'll first give you the disclaimer or the preface this by, I have not arrived yet as a business person, as an entrepreneur. I'm not sitting here with a seven-figure business. I've arrived and now I, I'm, I can give everybody coaching advice on how to be a successful entrepreneur. I've been successful in some areas and I've, I've failed in some areas or I've learned, let's say. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll say I've learned. <laughs> Uh, so it, this is still, I'm still a work in a progress from an entrepreneurial standpoint. I'm only four years into this and, and some people are killing it after four years and some people, you know, it, it takes them um, much longer. So uh, I'm, I'm still, it's a journey. And, and so I'm happy to discuss some of those things. But, you know, when I decided to get into full-time consulting, it was really more, all right, I want to be a speaker. I want to be on stage. I want to speak to, uh, audiences, wherever they are. I want to speak on leadership. I want to speak on culture, on, on team building. And that actually was kind of the easy part. It doesn't mean I was a great speaker. It, it doesn't mean I'm Tony Robbins, uh, this great motivational speaker, or Gary V. But that part was the easy part. The content part, the speaking part, that's easy. The hard part is the business part, which is what we're talking about here. Entrepreneurial stuff, the business part of it. And I almost, I felt like I, my first couple of years was being a graduate assistant. Uh, you know, those of us that have been in sports or in coaching, we start off a lot of times as a grad assistant for our first couple of years where you're pretty much doing all the, the tedious menial, you know, uh, uh, you know, busy work, but you're also learning on the, on, on the same, on the same, uh, on, at the same time. And so I looked at it as I'm a GA for these first couple of years and you know, I, one of my biggest, I think one of my biggest mistakes, if I had to do it all over again, and you didn't necessarily ask that, but one of my biggest mistakes would be, I think I jumped into it probably one year or two years early as po in terms of full time. Now there is a lot to be said for just jumping in feet first, but I also think that there's something to be said when you have a job. And so I'm a, I, I was a, an athletic director. So let's say I'm an athletic director, I'm a coach, and I want to now transition into the business of speaking to athletic directors, to coaches in the sports world, uh, even businesses, but you're still using a lot of the sports principles. The job that I had was very complementary to what I wanted to transition into. If I was a computer tech uh, technician, if I was in IT, if I was working as a retail sales clerk at Walmart, that's different. Me staying at that job does nothing for my transition. I don't build any more networking, any contacts. I don't get any more knowledge, but I was already in the industry. And so I think what I should have done is I should have probably gone an extra year to learn some of those business, uh, the, those business strategies while I was doing it on the side and preparing myself for a year from now to launch as opposed to, you know what? I think this is what I do want to do. And then I jump feet first. And then it's like, oh, wait, there's this whole business here. It's not, oh, wait, you know, I'll get these speaking gigs, but, and I make more at these speaking gigs than I make coaching or I make as a high school AD. But the problem is I don't do that every day. And then I don't have insurance and I don't have investments, you know, 401ks. And I, and, and now I'm learning, you know, okay, what happens in, and for instance, COVID, what happens when COVID hits? What happens if I'm sick? What happens if a, an event gets canceled? What happens if this, this, and this now all of a sudden it's like, oh, wait, I didn't think about that. I just thought, oh, I have good content. I have this stuff. I can go speak. I have contacts. I didn't think about the business side of it. So I would always recommend to people if you can save up money, uh, learn some of that stuff. If you have a job that you don't hate. Now, if you have a job that you hate, man, bounce from that job. You know, none of us should have a job that we hate, 
But if you have a job that you, you, you like or is halfway decent job and it's in that area that you might want to transition into anyways, then, then it's probably not a bad idea to, to stay one more or two years and put together a more detailed plan. All right, I've talked to three people. I've talked to four people. All right, now I'm going to talk to 10 people and I'm going to try to find out some of their mistakes and I'm going to try to learn from those so that I'm not out on my own. So I leave, I leave coaching. I leave being an AD and I move to Atlanta and I am, uh, I'm in this space. And so I'm on my own in Atlanta trying to make a go of this as an entrepreneur. And it's the first time I've ever had to be an entrepreneur on my own, work on my own. What's my office hours like? How am I going to uh, conduct my day? And then, you know, all right, my son's home from school. How am I going to do this? I got to go pick up my son. All this kind of stuff you don't really think about. Um, and so that was a really long winded answer, Jeff, I know. And uh, but uh, a lot of the challenges were just I didn't know what I didn't know. And I was kind of naive to, all right, I think I'm good at something. And so I can make a business out of it, which is true. You can, but I didn't know the business part of the business. I, I just knew the fun part. You know, everybody looks at the onstage stuff or, you know, you're blogging or, uh, you know, Hey, I've got content, but I, I didn't know the business side of it. Email list, uh, how to build a brand, how to build a following, how to build multiple streams of revenue to diversify yourself, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, website development, you name it. I didn't know that kind of stuff. And uh, so I spent the first year, year and a half, pretty much going through my savings. I was getting gigs, but we were going through our savings quite a bit, quite a bit, quite a bit while I was learning on the job. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's difficult sometimes. Entrepreneurship can be stressful as it is. And when you're going through that stage of it, that just compounds it as well. For sure. Yeah. Be because, and, and money and money is, is something that, it's always an issue. The finances are always an issue, no matter what we're doing. And, and you never want to be in a position where you're being led by, you're, you're making decisions based on finances. And, and so I think this is a key concept for entrepreneurs. It's not that you have to, you know, get rich. And it's not that you have to totally replace your salary when you were a nine to five person, let's say, or you had this, this, this job that the checks come every Friday or every other Friday, but it's, the, the lack of certainty. It's the, okay, I'm not sure where this money is going to come from. Okay. Maybe now I have to make some choices. And so what I was doing early on was I'm going to take all these different gigs that, that don't really play into my three, four, five year strategy, but I'm going to do these things for the money, but it's not helping me get to where I want to be. All it's doing is keeping a paycheck coming, but it's not building a brand or it's not building my business. So I spent the first year or two. Yeah, I was getting paid some money, but I was doing it just to get the money. Um, I didn't have a really good plan. And I had also like 75 different ideas out there. You know, I'm trying to do this, 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 this and I want to be all things to all people. And uh, that just doesn't work either. Uh, you know, Hey, I, I want to speak to this audience. I want to speak to this audience. Hey, what can you speak on everything? Who can you speak to everybody? Okay. Well, that might be true, but that's not a good business model. And I, I heard, uh, a great, uh, trainer of speakers. Uh, his name is Grant Baldwin. And he always says, if, if you can speak to everybody, then you really speak to nobody. If your audience is everybody, it's really nobody. Um, and, and we see this unless you are at the top echelon, like you're awesome, big time. Okay, most of the success, successful speakers or the successful business people, they have a niche. They know what they do. You know, even uh, McDonald's isn't selling tacos. You know, Chick-fil-A, they're not selling hamburgers. And I know those are two silly examples of restaurants. But, all right, this person is speaking in this area. This is their lane. This is what they stick with. It doesn't mean that they can't deviate but this is what they're known for. And this is what they spend the time on. And so it took me a few years to understand that that's what I should have been doing as opposed to going anywhere. You know, I'll go speak at this group. I'll go speak to this, this company, you know, I'll go speak to people that make airplane parts, or I'll go speak to people that build car parts, you know, well, yeah, that was paycheck. It was nice. It was experience, but it wasn't, it didn't get me closer to my goals of being, 
um, helping sports teams and being in that market and, and kind of being that guy in the, in the sports leadership, sports culture area. Whereas if you stayed as the AD for another year, you had had a lot more freedom to pick and choose where you were going and what aligned with what your goals were. Yeah, I would have gotten smarter because I would have had a year extra of like research and just talking to people and understanding, all right, this is what my plan should be. This is where I should be going. So number one, I would know more. But number two, I would have more money in my bank account. And and I know that seems very um, uh, superficial to a degree or greedy or however you want to uh, phrase that. But if you have X amount and th- in your bank account in the next year, you're making less than that, well, your bank account drains. Well, if you have a whole lot more in your bank account, your bank account might drain, but you still have a lot left over. So you can take more chances. You can turn down certain gigs and say, no, I'm not going to travel to, you know, wherever it is across the country for this gig. And it's going to take three days of my travel time. It's going to take a week of preparation where I could have been using that week to prepare for something else that might make me 10 X that money later down the road, or it might get me farther ahead in, in what I'm doing. And, and I'll, I'll give you a great example. Um, or, I mean, I don't know if it's a great example, but this is my example. We, we just recently launched the leadershipplaybook.com as a, uh, a membership site for sports teams. It's sports teams. Athletes can go to this. They can watch these videos, video lessons, two minutes at a time on their phones or tablets, all these resources for sports teams. This has been in the works for almost three years. It was supposed to be launched three years ago. Something always came up. Something always came up. Okay, well, I got to go speak here. I got to go speak here. I got to do this. I got to do this. And this always got pushed to the back burner, even though this was my ultimate goal was to release this, to do this for sports teams. When I'm preparing, spending five days preparing to go to the West Coast, you know, or going across the country to speak somewhere that's just for a paycheck then that's five days that I've taken away from something that could be huge or bigger down the road or can impact even more people. So that's what I'm kind of saying is that when sometimes you're, you're influenced by money or, Hey, I need, I need this money. So I I hate to talk about it in those terms, but I think if you have a job that you, you halfway like, and it's complementary to what you're doing, then spend an extra year at it. Um, you know, now a lot of people watching this, they've already made that jump. So, so we've just talked about stuff that maybe doesn't matter to them, but it's never too late to put a plan in place. It's never too late to pivot and say, okay, are, are these three things that I did yesterday, actually the three most important things to get me to where I want to be three years from now. And I think that's what we always do as entrepreneurs or coaches or any, anything, is, is we have to constantly be evaluating what are we doing right now? And is that getting us closer to our goals? And so, yeah, what I just said might not matter to an entrepreneur because they're already in it, but they can pivot. You, you can always choose to start today. Um, always choose to start today. You know, no matter what you've done in the past, now you might have to face more obstacles, but you can always choose today to, to be somebody new or to do what you need to do. Yeah. I mean, we do have a lot of people that listen to this that haven't started their journey yet. And so that's very beneficial, but also just, you know, talking your experience as an entrepreneur, you got 46 ideas out there and that's, it's the same concept that, you know what, stick to the path and start working on that one, but don't let go of this path until you've got the, got things figured out. So no, I love that. Um, you know, one of, one of the areas of expertise that you spend a lot of time on is leadership. And, you know, d- just to put this out here, just cause I loved it so much. The last time when you were on my daily success strategies podcast, I ended up making a, a post on Instagram about this. Cause you said leaders are dealers of hope. And that, that was like such a great quote. Explain that a little bit. Yeah, great. I appreciate you bringing that up. I, I would, I would love to say that this was originally my idea. I don't know if I have any original ideas, um, unless they're bad. If if I say something that's bad, it's probably my idea. <laughs> but 
I heard this first from, uh, and, and I, and who knows with the internet, if anything's true sometimes, but I first saw this attributed to Napoleon Bonaparte, you know, uh, uh, the French general way, way back in the day, but he said, leaders are dealers in hope. And that stuff, I saw that like when I was in junior high, obviously that was before the internet, but, um, I saw that in a book and now I've seen it on the internet. So it must be true, but leaders are dealers in hope. And it stuck with me because I, I really think leaders have to continually inspire their people. And you can't inspire people unless there's something out there that they can aspire to that, that, that they hope, um, you know, people don't give up because things are hard. People give up because they don't have hope anymore, you know, and, and I don't want to get it too far in the weeds about like mental illness or, or that kind of stuff. But, but people get depressed. A lot of people get depressed or they get down in the dumps, let's say without getting in the weeds there, they get down in the dumps oftentimes because they don't have hope. You know, maybe they're broke. Maybe their wife left them, their husband left them. Maybe they lost their job. Maybe things just aren't going well. They've lost whatever. They don't have hope. They don't feel like there's much to live for. They don't feel like there, there's something out there for them. And, and I think leaders, the best leaders are the people that are going to, that are going to say, Hey, come on, Jeff, we can do this together because X, Y, Z. And, and I, I, I looked at it like, as you know, I spent my whole life in coaching and I still, I've spent my whole life in athletics. I, I work with athletic teams, athletic departments, the best coaches are the people not saying, come on, Jeff, you can do it. You can do it. Come on, Jeff, you can do it. You can do it. I mean, we've all heard them. And on and, and the surface level, we're like, okay, that's good. Jamie is, is encouraging Jeff. Jamie is, you know, he's inspiring Jeff. The best leaders are the ones that say, come on, Jeff, you can do this. You can do this because I saw you do this last Tuesday or because this is why we recruited you or because I've seen you do this this time, this time, and this time where you give them a, an actual tangible reason why you are saying, Hey, we can do this. And so you always want to provide them hope. You want to be an encourager. Um, and you want to find value in a person. You want to add value, but you, you want to find the value. Also, everybody has some strengths. Everybody has some qualities that are positive. And, and I think the best leaders are the ones that are able to get that out of somebody. Um, you know, we talked earlier about teams, maybe not achieving their potential. The best leaders are able to get more of their people to, to achieve their potential. Um, the worst leaders are the ones that have more people not achieving their potential. That would be the obvious thing there. Um, so, so yeah, leaders are dealers in hope because I'm providing hope. I, I want, you know, I'm not going to say doom and gloom, you know, I don't want to be a doom and gloom person. Oh, you know, we have no chance of this or nothing like this. You know, even if we're down by 20 points in a game as a basketball coach, you know, okay, we're going to lose this game, but we can finish strong. We can work on some habits. We can work on some things so that we're better prepared for our next game. So we can get some momentum maybe into tomorrow's practice or into our next game. So there's always something to look forward to. There's always another goal. Um, and that's why I, I do think sometimes, and I know the journey or the process, the process gets overblown sometimes, you know, especially when we see Alabama's coach, Nick Saban, oh, it's a process. And it's like, well, yeah, it's easy to talk about process when you got all these five-star athletes. But I do think the process is important to remember because if we just say our goal is to win a national championship or our goal is to win this game, once we have that taken away from us, then what are we fighting for? Where's our hope? How can we motivate ourselves or each other? And so the best leaders are able to motivate and inspire people uh, and give them hope for something. Hey, we're doing this for this. And so, you know, entrepreneurial spirit, uh, business people, it's the same thing. And, and uh, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, you might not have a leader. You don't have that CEO inspiring you. Um, hopefully you have a wife or hopefully you have a husband or, or, or a close, you know, uh, I've heard it said, or someone said before, you know, your own personal board of advisors, um, you know, or a chairman of the board, somebody that you can look up to that maybe can inspire you to keep going or say, Hey, Jamie, you know, you have great potential as a business person because of this, this, and this, but I see you doing this over here or this over here. Is that, is that getting you to your goal or even better? Hey, Jamie, what's your goal three years from now? Well, it's this. 
okay, how is this, this, and this helping you get to there? Oh, I'm not sure it is. Okay. What if you tried this and this? So it's, it, it, it's, it's something where you're always kind of, Hey, forward thinking, how can I take you from where you are now to where you want to be? And, and that's kind of coaching too, leadership coaching, but for a, an entrepreneur, for someone that's in the self business uh, or self self-employed, you've got to find somebody out there that's maybe not invested in it, that, that can see the whole forest and not just your tree, you know, um, you know, coaching it's, it, it's so important for everybody to have a coach or for everybody to have somebody that they go to for advice that's trusted, that will give you some objective advice, but also give you hope, also help you get from one place to another. I don't need someone to tell me that I'm overweight or that I don't need someone to tell me that, you know, okay, this, this, or this is wrong. Okay. Well, help, help me get to where I need to be. Help me, help me get a, give, give me a solution. Um, so yeah, dealers that, and that, hope. I, I love that. I love that. And so I use that often. That was awesome because you answered my next question too. It was going to be, okay, for an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, that you don't have a boss, you don't have a CEO. How do you take that leadership? And so you answered that perfectly. And, you know, I've had people I've talked to that they're just starting their journey. And, you know, I know I'm going to need a coach, but not yet. I don't, not yet because I'm not far enough into my journey. And right, what you said, you know, that that's probably when you need it the most. Yeah. I mean, I would say we need, uh, as long as we're breathing, we need a coach. We, all of us need a coach all the time, or at least somebody that we can rely on to, to be honest and candid with us, but also inspire us and give us hope because we don't want just the, 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 the drill sergeant or the nag just telling us what we didn't do. Right. We, we know that, you know, if I just lost a game or if I just, you know, uh, had an error in baseball and it costs us the game, I don't need someone to tell me, you know, you screwed up. Well, I know I screwed up, you know, tell me it's going to be all right, but not just in the sense of a parent to a kid. Oh, it's going to be all right, baby. You know, it's, it's going to be all right because I believe in you because of this, this, and this. Um, and they help lead you forward. But I mean, everybody needs a coach in life, you know, and, and you can't see the picture when you're inside the frame. Um, you know, you're just too close to it sometimes. And I, I like to talk about sometimes we, it's hard for us to see the whole forest when we're just that one tree, you know, we just see our own tree and what's going on right here. We don't see the whole forest. And so we need somebody else uh, to help us with that. Uh, Usain Bolt, the, the fastest runner ever, you know, Michael Phelps, the best swimmer ever. They had coaches. Well, those coaches weren't better swimmers or better runners than them, but they were able to see things uh, a little bit differently and to be able to help take them from where they are now to where they want it to be. Um, it doesn't mean I'm going to get even a now, if I'm going to have a business coach for my, for my business, I probably don't want somebody that is living on food stamps and welfare and, you know, has had seven failed businesses and just threw up their arms and quit. No, I don't want that, but it's not necessarily bad to have a business coach that's had seven businesses that's failed, but now they have a business that's working. Now, maybe that business isn't where they need to be yet, but it's, but it's on the uptick. As yep. long as they're learning and they can help take me through some of those trials and tribulations and some of those potholes um, that I might not see, some of those obstacles I might not see. But I don't think it has to be, well, you're not a millionaire, so you can't tell me how not to be a million or how to get to a million dollars. There is some truth to that. But in the same way of a Usain Bolt or a Michael Phelps or a LeBron James, no coach LeBron James has ever had was as good as LeBron James. Uh, they might've been right. good basketball players, but they're not as good as LeBron. So I think that argument, sometimes we get in the business world and sometimes we're like, well, I don't want to listen to this person because they haven't made a million dollars or they haven't gone where I want to go. Usain Bolt's coach hasn't gone where Usain Bolt, no one's run that fast ever, except for like an animal. Right. You know? So, but I, I do <laughs> think it's, it's, Hey, how do I think that this person can help me get to where I want to go? Can they open up my eyes? Can they give me a different perspective? Can they provide hope for me? Um, can they be a good sounding board? Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. 
And I mean, like I said a while ago, I think you and I could sit on here for hours and talk because I love, I love your insight on these things. Um, But we are actually already getting to our time, time limit. So what I hope this does is lets our listeners realize the value that Jamie adds and one what he offers through his websites, his programs, everything. And then obviously through his three books and success as a choice podcast. So Jamie, do you want to share with us just where people find you and how they connect with you a little bit about your books, what, whatever you want to just so people can continue to learn from you. I appreciate that. Yeah. If, if you're on Twitter, um, that's, that's where I spend most of my time from a social media standpoint at coach Beckler. Um, and that's B E C H. L E R. Um, but also they can find me, uh, coachbeckler.com is my website, but they can find my podcast. They can find the links to books. And if they're in the sports world, uh, team, team sports, they can find, uh, uh, the link to my, uh, our membership site that helps athletes become better teammates and more positive leaders. And so, uh, we're doing a lot of things in the sports space to, to help athletes. Uh, I want to, I want to help develop, you know, the, I know this is mainly an entrepreneurial thing, but I, I, I think the, young, the youth or the young people are our future leaders. They're our future husbands, wives, you know, mothers, fathers, business people, educators in our communities. And so uh, I do think sports is a huge deal. And so I have a passion for developing the next group of leaders um, as, as well as we can. And that starts when they're young. And so uh, we're trying to do a lot of things for that as well. But um, I definitely have spoken to businesses. We work with businesses. Uh, here's the thing. When I work with businesses or even my wife, who, who, is a, who is a head teller at a bank, you know, and she has a team of tellers that she works with. Some of the very same principles I would use with an NBA team or a team that I coached is the same principles that you would use with a business. Um, when it comes to leadership, it's not segmented. It's not compartmentalized of, oh, well, this is a business and this is sports and there's two separate forms of leadership. Leadership is taking people and making them as good as they can be, help, helping them to achieve their potential, adding value to people, uh, making people better. That's what leaders do. And, and ultimately, if you make your people better, you're going to make your company better, your organization better. And so, um, yeah, I just encourage anyone out there, uh, you obviously like uh, 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 success. You want to be successful. You want to be better since you're listening to this. I encourage you, keep, keep trying to, to find ways to not only be better yourself, but to better other people. Uh, I, I'll, I'll leave you on this, or, or this, is, this is a quote that I can't get out of my head. I mean, I love it, but success is, is becoming the best that you're capable of becoming. Significance is helping others be their best. Um, so it's essentially significance. Do you have, are you living a life of significance? In other words, are you helping others be successful? And if you're doing that, if, if, whether you have a team of five, a team of 15, a team of 50, if you're helping everybody be successful and be their best, you're all going to accomplish more together. Thank you. And I'll, I'll have all these links in the show notes so you can find them there as well. But just if you're listening and you can't write it down or can't go to the show notes, the bus trip, the leadership playbook and building champion success principles from A to Z. And they're all available. I know they're available on Amazon. Are they on your website as well? They're on the website. Yep. Perfect. But Amazon, Amazon rules the world, right? So, uh, so they definitely are on Amazon. (laughs) Well, thank you so much. Um, that this was great. I really appreciate your insight, hearing your story and, all the information you shared with us. Thanks, Jamie. I appreciate it, Jeff. Thanks for having me.